Hello. Hello. So for today I would uh, we do right now environment architecture and environment thumbnails. And I also going to research way more than that. If it's okay for you. Because right now we did this is the wrong one. We did the mood board and later I gonna go to the homework assignment, so don't worry. Uh, for the people that already did the assignment. Okay, nice. So, first off, let me start by uh, researching a reference because I think it's the most important thing uh, to deal with it and it makes you much more understandable uh, what what happens in terms of research research so first off um, the importance of gathering reference is to understand what you are dealing with for example you know right now what's everything in the mood board you know exactly what you are doing but how does it look like that's the big problem uh, specifically for your concept because this one is for uh, even though it's for your concept, but much more in a stage of visualizing how it could look like, rather than how it looked like, or your ideas, especially your, your ideas. So, understanding what we are dealing with uh, is basically, it comes to the idea itself, in the concept, uh, in your reference. Because we can, and these are all specific researched. I can research by much more than that. Completely fine. But yeah, we can go later on over it why I research specifically. Breaking down your attention, that's, that's the thing what I actually try to explain. Uh, which is, okay, if we have a concept I know I'm bound to do, in terms of gameplay, gameplay, uh, Nordic, Nordic Scandinavia, or we can just call it Nordic Medieval. Do not make it completely uh, confused. Also, which is the Middle Age? Middle. H. Okay, the next one is actually what we. Okay, we have gameplay, which is a strategy game. It's a strategy game. In terms of gameplay, it's this one. In, term, in terms of, and I'm sorry that I talked that this is gameplay, uh, what I actually meant, this is the category of it, the team, which we go with it. Team, okay. Now that we have the team and what we know, what kind of culture it is, which is Scandinavia. It's time to break it down. Scan the navy. And how many different types you want to do and so on. Uh, the next one is, and that's for the third stage. Yeah, it will be recorded Vaishraj. I'm sorry for butchering your name. It's definitely going to be recorded, don't worry about it. But yeah, this is the third stage. And so yeah. Now breaking down my attentions. In terms of attention, what I want to add or let me say and pretend I just did a, a medieval Nordic type of stuff where everything is already aligned and fixed. Glued together a little bit. Based on that, probably could look at this and this is why I chose 
this reference because it has this type of thing going on with its architecture. The second thing is because of the grass on top of it. It looks basically way more down than it it's actually looks. Uh, the second thing here is because of those rocks and the, le uh, the ground here. Why I chose this? Um, this one is because of those kind of uh, statues that looks like okay a formation of the wood and also what's holding it a little bit together with this kind of element what's going here around. This one I chose because okay maybe I can add different types of direction where it goes. So this one goes in this direction and the one in this one. Statues, for example, I can basically maybe make statues on top of it. This one is probably for the front front part of it, which we uh, going to observe uh, way more later on, or going to draw way more later on. Uh, let me see. Okay, this part is because of the wooden texture or the way how it builds. Everything is built up to that and this type of thing. Also this one is much more okay seeing the architecture around it to give me a brief idea. Uh, a small, I mean a small idea how it could probably look like in inside of it. Because maybe we can do also the inside of it. It is completely fine. Uh, the second thing here. Uh, and yeah, it's probably the door. The door, this type of thing that goes around it, we can probably use that. And it could also be depending uh, of the concept because we do different kinds of sketches. It's this part which is the texture part of the rooftop. This one looks like a church, so I pretty much like church, but what ha uh, the reason why I took it is because of those things and this statue but basically is somewhere uh, somewhere here, yeah. It's exactly on this part. Those are the statues. This one looks uh, simply much also because of this one and it's hay stacked on top of it and I see also some different kinds of form and I actually see it from inside of it because maybe we can also make it look like that's from inside a little bit and here's the door and because of those kind of elements what are basically stuck together uh, we can also lo uh, look into the inside of it and make it ma much more interesting. Uh, here's the second thing, it's about the shape part or much more what we see around uh, the house basically. We see some really a little bit uh, saturated grass. This one is much more maybe a tree, broken tree and used as a bench. Uh, vaults, probably can use that as a concept idea. Then I really like uh, the shape of the the door, what basically holds everything together. So, yeah. Here the same thing, just with different types of ornaments. Another different type uh, of hay, but this time it's stuck. Uh, it sticks a little bit out and probably something here is why it's doing that or they stuck way too much hay into the roof on to the rooftop. And also another thing what I observed here on, on this reference exactly, there's hay and then there is some other type of rooftop. We can pretty much do this kind of thing. We can also look at uh, this kind of shape where everything is cut together really nice so this is why i chose it 
chose those reference because of the shapes and all these other parts what it does. And I drew over it. Uh, that's not a problem. I can pretty much copy and paste that over. So let's do that again. Uh, Nordic, Nordic reference, nice. Let's copy that. Press X, copy that again. Nice. Now we have again our reference. Oh yeah, perfect. If you guys want, we can do for half of an hour research and then uh, we're gonna do sketching. Now we come to the sketching parts, which is how we decide to do uh, that, especially when it comes to concept. Uh, it's uh, the variations of it. We do all these things in thumbnails. By the way, this is late sketch. sketch. Which basically means, okay, everything is refined, there is thick lines, there is slim lines, same towards here, but much more less, so it's basically in the middle. Uh, really refined, not so refined, but we can a little bit refine it, uh, not so refined, a little bit re refined. And this is what we actually plan to do, uh, different types of objects and different types of ways how we can apply those shapes into that. Same thing, we can also do it like a mood board, which is basically show some sceneries and how everything is uh, being created or if you see a house, you know, with different types of st uh, types of houses. We can do that, but in the late phase uh, of our concept, after we uh, finally chose something and re refine it, or we can do it right uh, after the uh, early sketches part. This one is much more refined, but it's basically uh, about tones and uh, make it uh, distinguish from different types of tones, how it could look like. We don't render, we basically chose another layer and put it down under our line drawing layer and just draw under it which makes the whole production way more easier. Uh, here is the second thing, the same as here, but without much more refined, much more everything groundier. And so yeah, let me actually start with the research type thing. So what I'm going to do now, we going to research much more about it. We actually know why we chose that, but probably I can add a little bit much more ideas into that. We know the shape, so we can explore it by the second, by the mood board. Uh, oops, wrong one. Yeah, that's the mood board. Uh, it's going to take some time. Okay, nice. So basically, on the mood board we have these different types of shapes which actually could, where we could create some amazing things out of that. Uh, let me actually copy that and then delete it. I hope it appears somewhere else. Then we don't anymore, we don't need it anymore. Well, at least I don't need then to add so much stuff into that and it basically doesn't save. Okay, it works. So nice, okay, we have our shapes. Uh, let me actually put it somewhere here, nice. Take this, put it right here, nice. So we have our, our first phase concept two, phase zero one, and with phase zero one, we're probably going to add also the second, the, uh, the first stage from the mood board because we actually saved some of those parts here, which are really, really nice. Let's copy that over. 
and then delete it. Yeah, this saves us pretty much a lot of time. Nice. Okay, now we don't need this one, neither this one, no. Uh, let's search for Nordic, Nordic medieval architecture. And we basically researched that for 30 minutes, uh, 3, 0 minutes. Um, yeah, I like this type of way. It this way to do uh, probably the concept, the walls, and how how the uh, the window looks like. You can basically make a fantasy concept out of it later on, which is really nice. I'm gonna pick that up for it, and I want to see the shape so it it looks like because probably I can do that with wood. Which is also really nice. Oh, another one. Perfect. This is much more crazier, with, uh, crazier constructed, constructed than the other one. Let's see. Let's further go into that. Uh, I really like this kind of aspect. What goes into that, you know? Different types of uh, skulls. Maybe we can do that for our house. And we going to add that here. Yeah, I think it's a much easier thing. Uh, let's see. In order to control everything, we can also add some different ty types of things outside. Maybe uh, it's happened to be summer and probably some of those people hang uh, some of those things out. I really like the desk, maybe we can use that as as our environment inside, maybe from the inside environment. Uh, is it that one? Yeah. It's that one, so we can much put it somewhere else. I get an entire, entire list of that. And this is just based on ideas, you know, if it comes to fantasy. I like to combine stuff together, but usually does not work in history but we can pretty much do that based off shapes on shapes i would also add some of those stuff here i really like those kind of shapes i know i go with a pyramid shape or maybe with a really crazy shape but works around uh, wine glasses maybe i can use this those kind of concepts uh, let's see, I really like the door part again. Is there any other thing? Yeah, this one. A simplistic oh, house, medieval Scandinavia, right. Yeah. I hope this is medieval Scandinavia too. Having door. That looks nice, that looks nice. And we take those things out, come on. Nice. Put it in the same folder. Nice. Oh, by the way, Control and Alt, you you make it bigger. Uh, let's see. Why do I choose this? Yeah, because of the door. Because it has a different kind of texture element into that, and the shape, uh, the pattern. I really like the pattern from it. I actually chose the perfect reference what fits into that well. So let's see. Let's add another 10 minutes, only another 10 minutes. I, whoa! I could go back, go back. I found something really nice. I hope if I scroll down, it actually is somewhere here. Hmm, seems not. That's sad. I could actually have something. But I like this one. I like to branch off, off sometimes in different parts, uh, paths. 
uh, that helps you thinking a little bit outside the box much more rather than just doing history stuff. It's okay, we do history stuff right now, the boring thing. And then later on we can turn it into a different fantasy concept when we much more explore shape design uh, in terms of sketching. Let's see, I like that rocks on top of it. That looks really nice. <clears throat> that looks really nice. This is way more beautiful. I really like that, what uh, they added here. Even though it looks like a little bit too much. Uh, we know that we have a specific kind of intention how it works, could work. I really like this part. Does it lead me to another website? Yeah, it had. At least not today. Uh, I think I'm done. And by the way, I use ProRef uh, in case if no one knows it. Uh, what this website is being called. Let's add another one here. Maybe I can add some house or call it different types of shapes. Uh, I really like this one. Maybe it's in the wood. Could, it could be at least in the wood. In the forest, I mean. I really like that water wheel. And we can add this one. But I want to stick with my normal villagers. We just try to make a concept, not expand, at least not right now. I think I pretty much did everything what I need to add. Nice. So we have here a reference and I briefly look at it right now. Right now um, our job is to, to do shapes and not exactly that what it represents. Um, Oh, probably wait a minute. We can actually do more, much more with it. Uh, let's just take a new one at 4K. I usually do it always on 4K because then I can crop it down and add those things much more. The smaller it gets, the harder. The smaller it gets, the harder it is. Just let me drink a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, let's see, why is it a recovery presentation zero one? Is it this one? Yeah. Okay, nice. So for all, for all of this, let's actually try to briefly do that. I, I really like to go chaotic. Just do probably. The set, the shape sculptures are basically for okay exploring with your shapes. It has only something to do with your. Uh, with your shapes, how you want to explore them. We can actually do that but right now. Uh, I think uh, we go with the much more easier route of perspective. Uh, imagine a box like this. This is the front part. This is this part. So we basically design everything like this. We could. Uh, but I'm going to, to do it much more faster, you know, way more broken down, way more sketchier, less refined, and add everywhere something, so that it's really rough sketch sketching. I really like this approach instead of that. But if you know how to do that, okay, fine by me, you can also do that. But later on, you need to go over and over again. 
which is actually really clear for you guys, okay? Uh, probably clear for you guys because I told you that we're going to to go over and over again on it. Uh, let me actually take those reference way more bigger, make them a little bit bigger. We don't need all of those right now. Uh, I'm right, right now I would love to have some different kinds of shapes into that. Uh, let's see, let me design some, some houses. So, it looks like a tent a little bit. And then later on we can go over it. This is, a, I think in my opinion, a little bit too big. So I need to keep it down, make it smaller. Our plan is to do maybe 20, 20 of it for today, you know, and then we'll find them later after it. But we're gonna approach it like a strategy game where it's level one, level two, level three, you know, level one, two and three iterations later on. So we do everything that we do here is probably level one. Yeah, level one stuff. Uh, let's actually do that. Remind me in 30 seconds that I need a break because it's always important to do a break. Uh, but yeah, I'm 21. But right now it's 2030. But anyway, let's actually start. I know exactly that I want some kind of things here, maybe some grass. We can change that into a different kind of texture. This is probably some other type of wood thing. And I keep it as simple as possible. I draw based on shapes, as you guys see. I, I try boxes to, to do in a really weird way, you know. Draw it like this, immediately nail it. But in a chaos like way where I can see the abstraction side, then I co can go into that, erase it a little bit. I see that part and then I refine it again. It's the same principle that you learned uh, yesterday from me, where I add then later on probably much more volume and other stuff. By the way, uh, I like everything to do in reddish and or other colors than black because black is just black. I think everyone, it's it's not a comfortable color in my opinion. I want to be much more comfortable with uh, those things uh, because for me, in my opinion, drawing with, I want to have much more a reminder that I am probably on pain, and, uh, not pain, uh, I mean pen and paper. That's the thing. But I'm searching for. Uh, let's actually do much more. Uh, another shape. And this is only for shape. We just do shape parts. Which is absolutely fine. Shape, shape, shape. They don't refine it. Probably we can do some other shapes here. Nice. And. Here something in front, here something in back. And but oh yeah. Those are the shapes that we always use based on chaos. As I said, it's it's a concept and later on we can refine those things. It's the fastest way I, I think in my opinion to actually see what's going on on around your concept. Uh, you guys don't need it to do, but I always like to draw in chaos, as I said. Uh Let's go to the next part. Usually, when I draw, uh, I don't use music at all. I think, in my opinion, music uh, keeps you for thinking. Keeps you away for thinking too much, and that's the problem. I just pretty much, l uh, later on, on the refined stage, I use music uh, to actually... Because everything is it's been set up, and I... I kind can do then later on add some music, you know, which makes things way more comfortable into the painting or drawing stage after we refine or 
at least where we refine it with a different type of drawing. And by the way, this, this is much more in this kind of perspective. No, no, how to have a clean line art. I just quill when I'm sketching it, that looks so bad. In order uh, to do that, it's actually a little bit of experience because based on your experience and you need to, if you want it fast, of course, you need to understand line theory and probably I'm gone, going to go over it uh, a little bit later after that course where you guys can take one of my class because the thing is why I have even though I'm scribbling and I'm really messy with it I think always in these shapes and I distort them I bend them you know like a jester and how light it is you know how strong it is how slim it is and I practice those boxes every single day um, in my other records, I basically uh, tell you guys that. Hey, I think it's the second record, uh, Shapes and Painting, or the third one. So yeah. Uh, let's go to the other one. Uh, I want to add something here. Uh, let's add here another thing. Maybe I can scrub it down. Don't make it way too much. Don't make it perfect. I don't really like that color. Let's go a little bit bright. Yeah, perfect. And now back to the shape because I briefly now understand how everything works. Nice. We take this part way more faster. Uh, let me use this part much more. And later on we can add uh, much more different parts into that. At least we have a small brief how, how it it could work or how it, it could happen. So let's see, next one. Next reference, I really like this part of it. Maybe I can add half of it, like a house, you know, where this side is basically a house. Goes much more into this cut type of direction. Mm, yeah, nice. But then it splits on this part. And we basically, by the way, uh, I split my shapes in three different categories. Uh, what I need to draw on top, which is this part, you know. So I basically analyzed this part non-stop, which is what, what could be down. And I break my shapes much more into that, what I could add rather than this part is, which is a triangle, and then the plane part. And then I, if I put it together, it works literally like that. And then... Uh, the other foundation which ha is on the ground or on so basically on the ground on top and what the actual shape it is uh, the object the object uh, on top on top and the object on the ground on ground because something needs uh, to be holding that together right so how could possibly 
happening that that's one of the things what you guys could think. I think this is way too much. Let's add, make it smaller. Uh, this one looks like where cows are. This one looks a little bit way more too much. Maybe I'm gonna split it into a different type of saison. But this one goes up, nice. A little ma much more less refined than it could be. If you scribble most of the time and then refine it, you have then a much more easier way to understand things. Because I don't want to press. I don't try to press non-stop. I try as loose as possible. Because I know for a fact that i probably going to spend uh, an hour or three hours to do that or probably much more minutes. Uh, now it's time I think for variations. How many I, did I do? I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I need 20. So let me put a timer on. I have 20 minutes to to add those things. Nice. I have the timer here. Okay, beautiful. We have set, uh, this is number eight. This is number eight, okay. It's way too much here. Maybe I'm going to add uh, something like, like a tent type of design. Uh, the other one goes way too down, way too down below. Maybe I could actually add something much more primitive. Where everything is being like this, nice. Everything is good. Okay, maybe the top of the power of those things is... I really don't like this, it's... It's not that, it's not really nice. Maybe I can stick, make some sticks together. Add those type of things. Let's add another one, which goes like this. Way more under the ground. Way more less refined. And you guys don't need to to do it in my speed, okay? It's absolutely fine if you guys have a little bit of a harder time to actually do all those concepts. Uh, take your time. Right now, I'm thinking like a designer and not like a, uh, an artist. My job is at not to think like an artist because then my artistic... Uh, my artistic uh, mindset comes into play. And then I ask myself, okay, should I refine that right now? Or I don't like that based on the way how it looks, but it's not about the look, it's about the design itself. Uh, right now I try to experiment with shapes. Okay, nice. How many did I do? That seven, eight, nine, ten, three, five, ten. Okay, another ten. Let's let's do it here. I really like this kind of shape. Let's do that. Let's do that. One, two, three, one, two, three, okay nice. I add this one here. And then it goes down. Maybe it goes way more or less down. But at least we have it. It looks like a huge house level three house. Probably we can do that later on. So level three house. And because of that, I don't try to copy it. So let's add some other type of things here. Uh, let's probably add some shields, you know, or barricades around it. So maybe it's the main hall. Let's think much more like a video game. I want to construct my main hall right now. 
Oh, probably I can add here some type of things that goes around. Could work probably also here, but may more or less, maybe four. And those are big one that sticks out. Uh, here is the other type of material. This is much more refined. Okay, nice. Next one. Nice, okay. Uh, let's actually test the other shapes out. I love much more variety. Let's do some triangular one that are really built together. This is a little bit way too big, but it looks like this triangle part really emphasizes some stuff. Looks a little bit fantasy like. So now let's add the other part here into that. Maybe I cut it from here. Because now you can probably see okay, this part works completely different. And you can, there's actually the, uh, this other side of it. And probably this is the main hall, or maybe this is the door, and I can add here another door, which is really nice. Uh, yes, don't forget this part. This part, uh, after the five minutes, another. F I just made three, three of them. Let's add some, some few elements into that. Uh, let's experiment with the gesture. Uh, probably, yeah, that's way more beautiful. And this one is like this. Then it goes down. Something is here that keeps it together. And I really like it. So I can't... <clears throat> I can't have experiment non-stop with it. Oh, yeah. Probably I should change it. Uh, the shape. Because I always do some medieval type of build up. Even though I already decided that. Right now I think about... Uh, which part of this, yeah, this kind of part, the triangular one. Let's actually add that. But it's much more in the opposite way. Much more in variety, even though we should probably not do that. Maybe for later on. Uh, this is way too big. Uh, I want to think in big shapes, not in small shapes. Yeah. Nice. And it literally looks like it's not that big. Come on. Take it out. By the way, if you guys want to program Keep Walking, I'm also going to uh, put it in my Discord channel. Uh, so don't worry about it. If you guys want to use it, it's just an easy program. You select, a, after you open it up, you select one thing here, which is waiting for program, and then you press somewhere on the canvas, and then it actually calculates everything. Uh, I really like, I want to split it apart, and one part is much more in front. And now I can add, now I, I, I can add things. <laughs> I actually really like that design. Let's use it much more. It looks like a, a real tent, but it's it's a nice one. It could work, you know. Oh, probably here I can actually make it way more bigger. Much more towards the side of it. So how many did I do? Only four. Well, four. I get slower. If I talk too much, I'm not really that much focused. So let's let's do fast one. How many do, did I do? Four. Okay, number four. Number five. And let's change the shape. Number six. Number six. 
I'm sorry if you guys donate or uh, follow me, but right now for this class, uh, you pretty much don't hear the sound or don't see what's actually happening or appears. I don't want anything to be uh, to be on my stream while I'm doing that class. Later on, I'm gonna gonna read it out loud after the class. It's over. Uh, let's see. I really like that. I want to combine this one together. Maybe at this t uh, part it's happening that it's not any more gra uh, hay. Much more grass thing going on. Okay, nice. Next thing, okay. Uh, let's, let's do the front part really crazy. You know, like a Chinese tent or is it Indonesia? Probably Indonesia. But it's still called work. Maybe it's way too early medieval type of stuff. It works much more true fantasy. Let's actually keep it real. How many did I do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I don't count this one. 10. Let's make them way more smaller. I always think uh, way too big. I should actually look at other reference. Uh, let's see, I really like this one. So let's simply do that. Even though it's really simple. But I'm really interested into that, what it does on top of it. Same thing here, maybe I can add that in different ways, maybe this is one for the main hall, because it's way more bigger. I can actually add that also front and behind. Same here too, nice. Maybe I add some skeletons later on and refine the whole thing. Oh yeah, this part is not, is absolutely not made out of grass or hay. And uh, let's see, this part, okay nice. Maybe I can add other type of stuff like grass then later on, because this is stage number one and level one buildings. Oh yeah, this could be a level 2 building from Free Triangular. Yeah, why not? Okay, I decided uh, what I want to do. This is number 1 building, level 1. This one is probably level 2 with a little bit bigger with much more details. And maybe level 3 is a little bit much more complicated. Uh, how many have I done? I should actually wrote, wrote, write it down. I usually am the guy that writes it down. This is one way how to sketch it. But there's also another way. We can do it not only based on drawing, but we make shapes. We can make actually shapes out of it. Number 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18. Okay, now I need only two. I think I actually take this one out and make it smaller. I have only seven minutes. Let's do it. Let's make it way more chaotic, let me say we, we already have established everything. Just a normal house. 
but this time a little bit medieval Nordic type of thing. Later on I'm gonna add probably shields and other type of stuff. Oh, I can't wait. I, I still want to do that even right now, but I I need to keep my myself in check. Nice. Because after that I refine uh, I reset my brain and add stuff into that. Because it's really important to reset your brain. Uh, I encourage you to take a break. After 30 minutes, every 30 minutes after you guys draw. If you make huge amount of hours of work. Uh, this one. No, uh, one last one. Let's actually see. Uh, which one? Yeah, nice. Probably I should change it. How about that? Uh, yeah, but usually I should experiment much more, but I want to keep it real for the environment. Uh, for because of history. And probably I should also mute myself on Discord for the sake of the chat. So yeah. Okay, nice. I have only five minutes. The rest I use it as a refinement. I forgot this part is way too much. This needs to be bigger. This needs to be bigger. This much more less. This one, you can actually cut it and use it as a frontal part. Nice. Maybe it goes outside here. Uh, here we can use it as a uh, that's another thing, maybe it goes up to the... It's like a balcony thing going on. And I can actually add here some shapes. But it looks like wood, you know. A really nice thing and comfort thing. It looks safe, as long as it looks safe, it's, it's really nice. But I want to design cool. Keep it cool with the design. Uh, yeah, this is number seven. Number seven could probably look much more better. And I actually want to have kind of a pyramid shape because I thought about this shape. And good for me, I actually keep it safe somewhere. So we can actually refine this one. A little bit, you know, and it goes completely down. And later on, we add much more towards it. We can play with the whole thing around. Okay, the next one is this one. Did I want to, to add? Probably I add here. Uh, hey, what's this? What does it do? Okay, I know for a fact that this part goes inside of it. So it goes really down, really down. You cannot see this part. We can only see uh, the podest, I think it's called. No, not the podest. You know, these things what you see in the Roman. But even the Vikings are using. Keep it simple, keep it simple. We don't refine anything, we just add detail. Now, a little bit of detail. Later on I can go over it and refine it much more, because I like it in in this way, you know. 
it keeps myself in check and then later on if I when I refine it probably I can't come up with a bigger idea a better idea to design it then I can refine it again and so on so I keep it every time in stage one and don't go up with stage two or stage three but even though there are some of them you probably see they are a little bit refined which is absolutely okay to do that you don't need non-stop to uh, to have it sketching like me you know it's absolutely okay to do that 17 18 oh oh okay i see i missed one spot i missed one let's design Maybe one in the back, some wood in the back, nice. Let's make a complete simplified one. Nice. So, okay, I think I have 20. Let's check it all. One, two, three, four. Well, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five. That's number five. Okay, I didn't. Okay, I did more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where is number ten? Okay, I forgot number 10, which is probably this one. 11, 12, 13, 14, verse 15. Let's do that again. This time another layer. One, two. Yeah, this time it's 20. I just forgot the numbers. They surely are 20. And with this one, 21, of course. Because I have color picker, I can make it better. Uh, a small break. This, uh, and in the next time, you know, five minutes break. And then after that I'm going to approach them in a much more different way. In a much more drawing way, where we basically draw it over silhouettes instead of uh, drawing it, you know? And I'm gonna show that the later one of how to draw on silhouettes. So don't worry guys. We see you also in five minutes.
Okay, we are back. Hmm. Break time is over, and thank you, Kiwi. And yes, it's a Fortnite font. <laughs> Probably, because I just downloaded straight up uh, a team on Streamlabs, and that's it. So, while I was on my break, I thought, hey, I didn't actually go way too deep or in depth with uh, a few kinds of things here. Oh my god, it's way too big. Let's make it smaller. This thing should be the same as this one. Because not only do we need to actually study, uh, understand what we are dealing with, we need also to study what we, we actually see with the player's intention in mind or with the if you are in a movie, if you watch some kind of movies, we need to understand, okay, what the guy see, uh, the person sees. And I think this is really, really important. After that, I can go much more towards uh, a different type of approach. Let's actually say, merge that, nice. Let's add another few. I really like this design. Uh, I really like this one. And my job is basically not... Uh, we can also trace it, by the way. A little bit bigger. And it doesn't matter about the quality, we just do line drawings. Uh, Usually on a stage, we should learn the entire thing, what's going on, but I already understand it. And in, in, in type of pipeline production, I have no time sometimes to, to do that. So you guys can trace it probably to see, okay, how it works. Or you guys can do it actually external. Which is really nice too. We just try to understand how does it work together. And this one goes over it. So we, we add a little bit much more an overlapping thing and make the line a little bit thicker. Another thing, uh, we just learn about the parts, not the whole entire thing. Because the parts is what Mostly we are concerned with if we try to add something because everyone knows that's a triangle or a box and a triangle together. But the parts is what actually defines everything. So I think on this thing we should actually learn the parts here on this one. And this thing, it should actually be a little bit thicker. And is it cut? Let's see. Yeah, it's cut in one way and then added in both way. So let's do it. Do it like that. Nice, okay. I want to add this part of it, but it shouldn't look that thick. I forgot one part, which is this one. It goes away and then up. Maybe because the house is like this. Then probably it adds a slim one here. So we have two different parts to deal with. Nice. I don't try to make details, don't forget it. I like the kind of shape that goes in here. It's It looks like it's cut. Then after it, this thing is being added into that, which is really nice. And then after that, the, the door part, which is pretty much the same thing. And the door 
the door looks much more like this but way more uh, brighter way more brighter always think why we we need to add those things or for what reason probably we we need to add later on story where everything is a little bit carved out much more patterns added oh this one this one is i think a little bit much more easy but i still going to do that and the reason why i do this one is because of these points here it looks like a triangle go uh, a cylinder going here around those things and it goes back adds another thing here what's there what is that also probably a, another type of tree I think yeah that could be next one is okay this type of shape again or we can take another part and learn it I know for a fact that this goes inside uh, the house then we take a strong emphasis on on it which creates much more uh, story this one is like this okay and then comes the higher part where we add this type of thing okay but it's much more diagonal it's much more diagonal the actual short render like this uh, sketch like this but it's a little bit out I made uh, the common mistake to actually not draw uh, big and big shapes or not zooming out uh, next one oh I actually approached this one so this is wrong is it the same thing it looks like the same thing but we can add something yeah only there are different parts now it's a shield is hanging around uh, let's see what can I do here yeah the wall we can do the wall pretty much and learn how the wall actually functions because the function is the most uh, important part of a design if you know how it works then you know how to execute it and the more you learn from uh, from it uh, the better your design is going to get in terms of environment I actually really appreciated the part where everything is being adding much more storytelling, much more a shield, you know, a simplistic shield. Oh uh, yeah, it's much more smaller. I could add that as a storytelling element. Probably a bench. The bench looks like this and the wood is the wood is like a cylinder nice next one I like this part very much so I try to understand it where it goes let's actually see nice it goes much more in this type of direction okay it goes up, we can barely see from there. Then it goes down. And then it makes this part. Something is here on the top. Okay, then we have some leaves. Not leaves, hey. Here's probably 
What's there? Okay, there are different types of layers when if it comes to the house to prevent it uh, raining is coming inside of it. Uh, yes. And then probably we can actually shape it like like it, uh, it really is. How it really is. I try everything to see in perspective, so keep that in mind if you're going to design something complicated like this. And let's actually test the rest of it out. Maybe I can add here. And it goes probably down. Here's the next thing. Uh, I really like this wood part. Where everything is, even though shaped and constructed like this, you know. Then it adds another emphasis to the house, which goes like a triangle, like a lightning bolt. So let's do this one. Let's first add the big shape part, and then after that the other one. Number one, number two. By the third one, I just need to make one line because it's already outside from it. And now lightning bolt. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, nice. Two, three. Two, three. I keep telling myself non-stop uh, numbers and other type of things my, while I was I drawing. Because sometimes I, I don't want my head to to let myself, uh, let me think, you know. I want myself uh, think for my brain, which it's called focus, if I'm honest. It's a way more better approach to telling yourself what's happening. And it inspires you to do much more, I think, in my opinion. Uh. Okay. This one goes now like this. Okay, nice. And now we have everything together. At least here. Oh, the wooden texture. How is the wood? Is it well organized? Or less? Okay, this one goes from the side. From this side, this from up, and then there's actually something that's preventing it. I don't like this brush. Uh, let me actually change it. Change it into a dark one. Much more vibrant. Nice. Is it vibrant? No. Let's go a little bit up. Nice. Uh, this one needs to be thick, a little bit much more thicker. Oh yeah, down, up, down, up. And I keep, keep it much more like a wooden texture, where some of this lumber, you know, so I will literally spe uh, doing like uh, pretend myself as sweating, you know, and then make this kind of lightning curve, maybe a little bit up and yeah. Then I cut it again. I try always this kind of shape when it comes uh, to a v uh, texture, which is up. I cut this one in half. I cut this one in half. I cut this one in half. And then I add probably in the middle part the elements into that, which is actually this one. And then I cut it again, again, and then I add slowly those textures into that, which really works. Try to be a, as easy as possible, not to push uh, your lines. 
not to give too much strength because right now we go do the easy part. Because hard in characters, everyone goes hard. Everyone needs to understand how it works, you know, from a character. And then add probably the hair type, the ears. Maybe some other type of thing. Maybe the custom and so on. I think this is and then we'll find everything which is actually or usually other people will find it immediately and just try to to make it really simple and add immediately. Those things. One, two, one, two. I don't like this one. Then add much more into that shape. Well, you have then a character. But usually I'm way more with it. So we should at least prevent that to happening. We are right now at the sketch phase. But now we know a couple of things at least how it works, how everything works together in those elements. Even though those are supportive sometimes, supportive elements. But, but we still have a brief understanding how it works at least. Or this part, maybe a small thing. I could make this a stone wall. Yeah, I never tried stone walls. Let me do that and together. And probably I can add way more story into that. Uh, I saw some wooden complex from the side. It's a little bit up. Based on that shape. Let me actually delete this character. I don't like it at all being here. We are doing right now characters, uh, environments and not characters. So let's see, uh, this one is not here at all. This is the last thing that we, what I do. Goes up, oh yeah, I'll just start from the middle, half of it. Again, half of it, and then add. Sometimes I use it without shift, which makes things a little bit easy. And I see some cracks here, some other type of stuff. This one is way more up here, because there is a dis distance a little bit. What I see, oh, is it? No, it's not a distance. But at which po position? Is it? Oh, okay, it's actually way more up. It's a little bit way more up. Probably some way here. And then it goes down. Oh yeah, middle, middle, middle again. Okay, nice. We know now how how this works, at least in a different type of, of a sense where what does every support role do, um, makes, what every support role does. So the next thing. Now it's time to actually take it into a new level. We did actually so much things in those 30 minutes we, we understood okay how a few part works uh, in those type of shapes and how nordic buildings or medieval buildings or all that other type of stuff that we actually figured out works it's time now to have a complete different approach in terms of drawing and i mean it drawing with a bigger Thing. It looks like painting, which this actually is, because usually if we paint, we use big shapes, middle shapes, uh, 
I'm sorry, big, middle, and small. Same happens if we draw. If you see this box, and then this box, then this smaller one. We always start with big, middle, and then small shapes. But this time it's time to paint over it and it's just based on... Let me try to pretend that this is okay. We just paint, we just straight up paint all these shapes together. And then we draw over it. Because we want to see the silhouettes and I think the silhouette... And I think you hear, hear, hear that in characters, I think the silhouettes are most important things if you want to recognize a design or a character. Uh, let me explain it in a way more easier way. Silhouettes. Star Wars. I think on this point everyone knows those kind of silhouettes, right? This is, for example, Luke Skywalker. This is Leia Organa. Han Solo. This one looks like, I don't know, looks like Rey. This one looks like Rey. This one looks like Boba Fett. Uh, this one, that's probably, again, Rey. Why the hell is Rey again here? A Ewok, uh, a Jedi, Yoda, Kylo Ren, and Darth Vader. So we know how we easily understand uh, how silhouettes work, and they are easily defined. Then, and as as much as as much as uh, how should I say that? The more we try to understand things through silhouettes, the more we can push our design, you know? And we don't even need to, to add that much. We can also go to shadows, you know? Where everything is much more crazy. Much more bigger, much more like this. Even though we draw it in the Complete different type of way. Oh yeah, I need those reference. Let's try and add another thing here. And then later on we can go on this, make it uh, take the opacity down. Then I'll add all of those shapes that are really important. Be because in terms of shapes we can do it we can do this, you know. We can crop it and uh, completely transform it in a thing, in a way how we like it. For example, I can come up with a completely different idea on that one. And then probably change it into a smaller thing. Add this on top. Then go huge with it. Really huge. Actually, I really like this one. It, it looks like a level 3 building. That we try to do. Hmm, I want to experiment actually with this kind of shape. It looks really interesting. Let's actually see if I can push it way more towards in a different kind of way. We don't need to do hardcore uh, medieval type of Nordic stuff. We can also add some fantasy elements into that. If it's if it's based on historical accuracy, then no. But at least uh, it makes me think in a completely different way. It's much more faster and basically all of those silhouettes are the same. 
a little bit and let me actually yeah this one is the right button I can push those things together and make it look like okay it has a direction towards it like a jester this thing I can probably copy that again transform it vertical because I really like the design of it and then delete this part of it and make it look like they add some some bunch of some bunch of things of it where everything is balanced and after that it's just really beautiful Hmm, let's create some more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's create another 3. Fast, faster. We want to experiment really with the shapes. Uh, let's see. We didn't try try the wrong shape, let we actually do that. No. Nope. Don't make it complicated like this. I think sometimes it's too much and I want to keep the triangle thing because it's lonely and we actually set the mood board up to keep in mind the triangular uh, things are the most important part of our our project. And triangular says basically, okay, it's danger. That's what the the sh uh, the shape uh, tells us. And uh, we know exactly that the mood is set, unwanted, offended, you know. But it could be also be sometimes anger, you know, because it's a triangle. And how we do we reach to the point of uh, those other different type of things, different types of feelings. Maybe because it's a complete different shape, maybe we add another shape, which is probably this one, or then we add story into that, uh, which creates a whole another issue, not another issue, but much more. It creates a, a value for us in which di direction are we going through? I actually like to copy. Oops. No. I actually like to copy that. Put it way more down. Copy that other part. Nice. And now we put it again down. Where it basically takes the shapes, shape of the that thing. Then we have our small house. Beautiful. I actually really enjoy the way how it probably at me uh, shows us some da some danger, some danger route. see okay maybe we can copy that over it make it smaller or make it thin do it again nice uh, probably we change the direction so I control B control B for level 3 house nice this one I make a copy of it Delete a few parts to actually see through to that, you know. It's really hard to see through it. Is it this one? No. 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 Then it's the last one. 
Yes, it's the last one. Now we made our level 3 house based on silhouette. A really fast way to do that. This is probably level 2. And I create another one based on top of it. I really like the shape to change. But this one I copied somewhere. Right now we experiment with silhouette as much as we can. It can create so many amazing things for us. Imagine a building like that. It's actually very more beautiful. This is probably our level 2 house. Wait, or probably our level 3 house, depending if we want to do it that complicated. So we basically experiment as much as we can with our shapes. But let me first off, before I do that much more, we wanted to do a 20 again. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11. I've, it takes probably a way more longer to experiment with the shapes, but at least we find something really cool how we produce it and based on that silhouette we can add actually way more better stuff into that into these things because sometimes drawing what it does to us it it basically hinders our ourselves sometimes so it's really important to create different types of shapes when it comes to design to actually uh, identify what we actually see rather than okay identify based on line drawing because everyone can draw a cat but how many silhouettes of a cat uh, are distinguished for another or how many silhouettes of a building can you actually do uh, to make it much more cool much more interesting and we do do that non-stop in uh, not non-stop but Many, uh, many times in our pipeline production, it's really important to do that. And it's really important to experiment with those kinds of shapes because you have a faster way to, to do stuff. It's way more fast, it's way more... People appreciate that way more. Uh, actually, yeah, I want to add something on top of it. And I actually don't like this design. It's actually deleted and added another one. Did I actually took out the numbers? No. This one is number eight. Um, probably I make should make it smaller. Yeah, let's put them a little bit together. It's way too big, in my opinion. Later on, I'm gonna give you guys also some homework about silhouettes and applying. Uh, I actually, if I'm honest, yeah, applying, uh, learning how, uh, studying those shapes because we we basically, at least in a production and not on private time, it happens that we fake our understanding in terms of visual library that means everything is based on the same silhouette sometimes it could be this could be a japanese house for example i need only to add maybe two two things you know looks like a japanese temple now to me it goes only down then you see that weird podest thing going on so it's actually really really nice if you work with silhouettes like that that's one of the reasons why we work with those things. We can identify them way more easier what our problem is. And we came up then later with 
with those different kinds of solutions over those drawings, or over those, much more over those silhouettes, which I really appreciate that uh, production pile, in the production pipeline silhouettes are the most important thing. Uh, as a designer, we need to understand uh, silhouettes as the base for our things. It's like tracing over. And I think tracing is the best thing ever when it comes to tracing over silhouettes. You can also take one concept, you know, and just trace, trace a little bit over it. Then you already know what kind of shape it has because it's basically the same design over and over again. Especially when it comes to environment art. We just have different arrangements of buildings. Complete different arrangements. Uh, I wanted to change this one. Yeah. Nice. Again. This one should. Okay. Bigger. I completely forgot that I. Okay, no. Again, big. I completely forgot that I should only use big uh, shapes and big brushes to actually do that. Only if it comes to a little bit of a middle shape, then I actually change that. And let's copy that again because I really like the design of it. Make it way more smaller. Copy that over again. Shorten it. I really like really this type of approach. What's going on? Yeah. Not only helps silhouette with our design, but also with our ideas, how we approach it later. Let me actually calculate now how many we did. Uh, I'm sorry, my brain doesn't keep up with numbers, especially if, when I'm trilingual. Uh, German, Romania, and English. Uh, let's see. Let's see, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we have fourteen designs, we need another six. But this time I have fifteen minutes and this timer, not this timer, but much more the real hour. Uh, the real hour is on on twen ten. We do another break, okay. How many have I done now? Twelve, okay. Twelve. That means I need to do another eight. I need to do do it fast. If I arranged it way more better I could actually do that. Okay, nice. So the next thing I want to actually experiment with this kind of shape again. Nice. I really love it. But I think I'm going to add much more much more stuff into that. Add something into that, maybe like a church it should look like a church I can add much more sticks here or is it called sticks I don't know I don't know the information but it, uh, at least I know it's wood okay next one let's draw the different kinds of silhouettes let me actually look at 
the other design. Let's see what we didn't draw. I like this kind of thing. Everything looks the same, okay. But this one, this one is special, this one is special. This one probably just because we don't see our silhouettes. There's actually a faster way to do that. Let me just add, add those things into that. Then call it a day. Nice, nice. Adjust the right amount of shapes. Done, okay. How many do we do? 14. So 6. That's number 5. That's number 3. I don't know which number it is. Keep telling my brain what number it is. Maybe I should forget about the number. Actually, do it quite different. Hmm. Maybe a different type of shape. We'll see that here. Next one. I don't want to make it look like Chinese either. Okay, next approach. At least we experiment with the other side of it. This is now way more taller building. And actually has a front uh, door. Uh, I mean rooftop. Meanwhile the other don't have that. I forget I draw. Uh, I paint and not draw. Paints. Okay, nice. The more you do or paint with silhouettes, even on characters, it's easier to to do that. And there is actually an, another approach towards it. I can make it based off with textures, which is way more easier. Or I can build it like a value, you know, where everything is based on values. Not that strong. The elements are not that strong. Only those what I actually want. And then we have our value painting. Uh, this technique I learned a little bit when I was looking at Anthony Jones for from Robo Pencil. I think that's what his company is called. Or that's how he's been called at at YouTube. In YouTube. Okay, nice. How many I have now? Let's calculate again. This time in German. Okay, we have now 20, 20 silhouettes, and each of them is completely different from each other. But a little bit. Let me say that, because some of them are pretty much look the same to me. Now, I think we should take a break, a small break, and then after that I draw the overhead. So we set the opacity a little bit down. Take a five minute break and fix this and do this. Is there another thing before I need to go to a break? Uh, let's actually look before I forget any everything. 
Uh, yes. I actually forgot how to explain uh, this approach. Later on we're gonna draw like this, you know? Where everything, okay, but where everything is much more in in a refined stage. We don't need non-stop to draw those uh, crazy shapes, you know? We can all actually also apply it completely different and use the silhouette as an advantage for us, you know? Because this is probably shadow. This is only shadow and we can only add those crazy shapes on it, you know? It could work, it could really work. Same thing to here, even though you see here, even in character. Some other people do it in a character way, how, how I approach those things. Uh, yes, I think that's the third thing that I'm going to teach you guys. This could be only applied sometimes in character and in, uh, creatures. It's re really rarely on an environment because uh, because of the light. But probably we can actually add it. Let's see. Uh, five minutes break. Uh, we see us in five minutes. Then it's actually 22 here.
Okay, we are back. So, in terms of silhouettes, we can approach it in this kind of way, or in this kind of way where everything is already set up. Uh, so yeah, but we try a little bit both of it, or much more upper side what Feng Zhu did to actually approach it. So. The thing is, and I'm sorry, I forgot my reference. I always keep them in front of me, or sometimes from the side of the the second desktop, uh, desktop or the third one, or the fourth one, depending how much reference I need to have. Uh, I think this part, this part is the most important one. Yeah. So let's actually draw those things. They more better out. Is it is it really well? Nice. I actually really like to be way more sloppy than that. Not sloppy, but uh, way more loose. It actually makes you define those those shapes way more better. But now you can basically trace over it. Define it much more. It's really beautiful uh, to trace in a way where we already set everything up. We don't need that much complicated stuff to do. Then after it, we just need to nail it, nail the design, which is. Which is now the easy part of it, because we already figured a little bit our silhouettes out. Define that much more, make it much more stronger. I really like this part where everything is cut a little bit in a different way. Maybe I can use this building mm, way more bigger. I actually only going to design a few of these buildings because the reason why is because uh, I need to to see what you guys have been done as a homework assignment and I need actually to criticize it now after it so, so don't worry this is coming now uh, today Sometimes you don't need to actually follow the, the silhouette, you can also come with a completely different type of design. But makes you makes it way more comfortable for you. For example I can split this one into different types of uh, design. Then go up with it. Which is really beautiful. This one is really gesturized. It makes it look way more beautiful. I forget every single time that I need to split it in the middle. It's not very easy to do that, especially when it, when I talk or when it comes to those kinds of design elements what I need to, to add in this picture. Middle, probably from the side. Probably this one is rock. This one is actually some type of wood thing going on. Let's actually put the op opacity a little bit down to actually see how we define those kind of things. Way more faster. I think in my opinion we should act way more faster when it comes to to this kind of kind of design. I don't try to refine it. Later comes the refinement process. Keep telling that to your head and then later on you 
you don't need to think much about it. You know exactly what you telling the brain. Sometimes uh, we use completely different types of design elements depending uh, what it is. We can also use a cylinder. If I'm honest, I barely did something with cylinders. This one is really high fantasy. And probably we can do it like, like a crazy type of shape where actually the building is like this. It's actually really nice to follow it. Later on I'm going to teach you, I think next day, not next day, next week, because I barely have time to cover everything for today, uh, for this week. Right now I have I, I stay stuck with one freelance, and I gonna end it uh, this week. So probably next week we have from Monday I think from Monday to Tuesday, um, Monday to Friday, a ton of time. But I cannot promise it because uh, I want to to study too, you know, and I need some time of re refreshment, especially when it comes to explaining different types of designs in other parts. I need to think about how I can structure this course, uh, especially when it comes to preparation. And just two days or an entire day is not so much. Right now you'll see the boring part where I just uh, refine all of those things. Maybe I should pu put it down. Yeah, it's way more better. But hey, we came now with really interesting shapes and creative thinking, especially when it comes to creative thinking part. Uh, how those silhouettes work. I think right now we should try to add then later on more story. But this process, what I do right now, could take you guys maybe three days, you know? Or maybe more. You guys don't need it, need to do it in one day. Uh, even as a junior artist. Don't do the hard part first take it easy take it in a few steps and enjoy the process because if you enjoy the process uh, it's you have a much more easier time to appreciate what you are doing especially when it comes to designing silhouettes and other parts of it One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, nice. This one, I can add other type of buildings. Later on, I'm going to decide which one I want really to refine. Uh, I chose three of them to refine. And then five up to ten of them to, to show different types of iterations from it. Or we can do it... Uh, also in a completely different way, depending how I decide to take the project. As we talk about projects sometimes, uh, and that we take it from the perspective as uh, we design environment for a strategy game. Now, the creative thinking goes different if the project, uh, the executive director or the art director or let me say someone from the higher ups decided to not make a strategy game uh, then later on he decides to do probably an open world game 
then I need to create a mood board around it. Another mood board which uh, actually defines much more the things that we actually, uh, actually need to approach. Uh, I then draw maybe sceneries, you know? But probably could look like a video game. Or much more than that. Because this is uh, why we are here for. Creating uh, video games, but in the same time drawing. Without taking the uh, as artistic side into consideration. Uh, because sometimes this is blocking us so hard. Uh, especially when it comes to production pipelines. Uh, following a production pipeline. First off, as even in sketching, when we do concepts, we should at least uh, fundamentals are the least of those things what we need to to keep in mind right now. So that's why I tell you guys uh, every single time, every probably every hour or every ten minutes that you should not think about uh, design or how how detailed those things should be. I think this is really important to keep in mind. Even though it's a really beautiful thing, you have the job as an artist. This is really beautiful, even though you do freelance or probably some commissions, but in the end uh, you see everything as a as a thing that works for your game, for your video game or for an uh, someone else's video game. And every time um, when a project comes then out, you, f you feel actually so much calm that it went so well probably, because the job as an environment artist is to not be, uh, to not stick out, you know? And what I mean by that not sticking out is basically means, okay, if, if uh, a gamer or a movie a guy just uh, watching movie, a guy that just mo watches movie or TV series, the audience itself, if the audience says, that's a weird tree. Then you did the, uh, the wrong job possible. But if this one is in focus, then you and they actually see that, okay, that's a cool tree. Then you did a really good job. Because it's really important uh, to understand, okay, should I stick out with my design or should I not stick out? Depending what it is, right? If... You can even ask the, uh, the director for it. Should I make a building that sticks out or should I, or way more easier. Should I make a building, what kind of building should I do? Should I do it for a blacksmith? Should I do a market, main house? Should I do a barrack uh, for the troops uh, to be recruited? What should I do? And on that point, he's gonna, you're gonna get only straight answers from, from him. Because you come much more with a defined question. And let me say my my strategy game went full on open world and he decided for me to draw some mood paintings where I actually see those kind of villages. Even though we do that, yes, but for the 3D people we still need to draw uh, in a way what you see right now. We need to design those elements because of uh, they have then a much more harder time to, to see this uh, let me say yeah this kind of thing this works only for the environment if everything is set up you know because someone needs to do a concept for this ship or a concept for this door or what, what else that is right or all this this other type of things but goes into place. Sometimes I can also, even though I did this, uh, mood painting, you know, or 
let me say, uh, build up concept for uh, for the environment guy, I can also uh, take this concept and do it in uh, in 3D at my own. Because I probably understand it way more better than the environment guy. And based on the environment guy, he can now go, uh, go uh, come to me and say, I'm gonna refine it now. Okay, thank you very much. And it can straight up go to post production, which is really nice. A really nice thing to do. It you basically help people out because uh, some concept artist, you know, and it it depends how much time you actually produced for video games. Some people think. Uh, this is this is very, uh, this is not necessary to do, you know. Your job is to help people out to fix, uh, to come with solutions, to come up with problem solving things, not to create problems. And sometimes we, as an artist, uh, create those problems in the first place, but then we fix our problems uh, based on. Uh, our sketches, our concept, depending how it could look like, depending how it is, you know. And probably I should add also some doors and window and other type of things. And yeah, that's how it it's actually is, you know. We we define non-stop those things and try to come up with solutions because we create the solution, yes. But also sometimes we create a problem, and the way how we fix this problem to to think like to understand the position as a 3D artist or to understand those other people what come after us. It's really important to see uh, your your position into that, and that's why I I encourage you guys to think like a video game artist. Uh, like you creating your own video game or like you you try to uh, fix some solutions, some problems. And I think this is what makes a concept artist, a real concept artist, a senior concept artist. It comes up with those solutions then way more better than you. But your job is only to fix small problems maybe as a senior. Uh, I mean junior, but for that, as a junior, you increase your fundamental mindset uh, and visual mindset because of those things, because later on I can actually research all uh, much more stuff. This is right now phase one of the research. I can later on add story. The most important part is to understand this free uh, design uh, concept art rules, I would say. First one, make it cool, then make it understandable, which is actually fixing and understanding this, um, the problems that occurs into that. Uh, let me actually write it down for you guys, okay. Um, what do I want to do? I write down, I've, I kind of forgot. Uh, let me say, Fix, no, make it cool. Make a cool design, that's that's your job, okay? Make it cool. That's the first one, the one thing that you think, should think about it. Because this has nothing to do with fundamentals. The only fundamentals that hinders you is actually shape. Uh, maybe probably those three. A third one which is line theory, but line theory can easily be over overlooked by okay refining those things, make the shapes then bigger, you know, in one side of it, or make this one uh, this one uh, line thicker. I mean lines not not shape, I'm sorry. But yeah, this well, those things are really important. Uh, the rest of it, uh, I would say, yeah, line theory, shapes, 
shapes and perspective. And I teach you basically a little bit yesterday about perspective. Those three are the only three what actually hinders you. And this one is basically an artistic approach. This is really artistic. And this you're going to learn way more later on. That's why I, I said two and then later on three because the, the third one is an artistic one. But yeah, make it cool. Make it understandable, you know. Or fix your problems. Because sometimes, okay, this guy wants to add some, some things but actually supports this building. Which we now then understand that this one is the solution to our problem how we fix it make it understandable or make it logical add logic and then add story the fourth one is but let me stay here it's just the fourth one is is render or fix your line drawing or fix all that other problems with uh, all that other fundamental problems what happens in your painting or drawing I hope you guys are still here <laughs> just write something I don't know maybe okay I'm still here you know to keep uh, you guys in check, not that it gets too boring. I hope I don't don't sound like too boring because it's a lot of stuff and a lot of information that comes into that. But at least you guys understand a little bit about the pipeline production, and not every pipeline production is the same thing. By the way, uh, there are different kinds of companies. And everyone, every concept artist would say that. They find, <laughs> they find the same thing, you know. There is indie, there is, there is double A and there is triple A. And both or all three of those things can, uh, can change depending what type of project you, are, you have. It can change the workflow through time, it can change... The, really everything what occurs or what happens in our uh, in our career especially when it comes to changes on on bigger companies like Ubisoft at least that is what I heard from other people and yeah that's about it I really like you now the shapes. Uh, it's really very defined. It's simple, yes. But now at least we understand where everything is. And the last thing is we I added a ton of other types of stories. Okay. Uh should I finish this, finish the rest, or do you guys want to go straight up to uh, to your homework assignment and then after that I give you homework? Yeah, no problem. Sometimes uh, I, I, I tell you that the, uh, the, some things, you know. This is recorded. This is definitely going to be recorded, so don't worry. Yeah, you definitely can come back and study everything, so don't worry about it. At least have I, I want to, to have some people in that classroom chat for other people, because sometimes if 
the other mod mod ask would ask me if my class is done or not, depending what it is, you know. Because it could happen, <laughs> by the way. But yeah, do you guys want uh, a critique first for for the people's homework what they did before, and then after that we go straight on to the other design part. I mean, to the homework. Then we can pretty much call it a day. Okay, let's go with critic. Uh, let me actually save that. Yes. And this one too. I don't need all this stuff. Uh, let's see if... Let's create a new one. I'm gonna critic all of you guys. Uh, but actually posted the homework into the chat. Uh, need, not here on the chat, but at least on my homework type of site. So let's open original. This is number two. And this is number three. And then this one, okay. So first off, let me talk with this one. It's a little bit small, but it's actually okay. That's the user for Bart, okay, for Bart. And the other one is Noviden. Noviden. An icon for you, as usually, okay. Let's actually copy that over. Noviden did actually some warm ups. But I need actually to, to show you guys what the problems are, uh, when it, especially when it comes to that. Because there are some problems. And I think if some pro is here, he would spot immediately the thing, what they would call it out. Okay, now we didn't did I actually have all of those things. But let's go, uh, before we do that, just a small break, I need, I receive a phone call.
So, okay, sorry for, for the thing, and before we do that, yeah, CK Rayman. Uh, okay, Crispy. Uh, yes, I'm going to do environment for the future, so don't worry. But now let me start and walk through, through what those people did as fun for bot. So in terms of the setting, it's a really hard topic. So I actually wanted to go with a very easy one, but you can to totally do that in th three months or four months. Uh, taking up some concept. The shapes are really interesting. I kind of kind of reminds me of the a big tower or a really crazy shape, but maybe a hook or something, which is really interesting. You want to add those kind of shapes? Looks really nice. Uh, you make an open world, which is understandable. You want to add some baroque type of thing. Am I right? Yes, Baroque. English Gothic, okay. So this is understandable. This reference, you want to paint one inside. Inside architecture and outside architecture. Okay, that means uh, you need to do one page of iteration. Another page of iteration with inside of it. And, and then actually present the inside of some of those buildings because it's it's an open world, right? Uh, design with the player intention, how would you think uh, you would go to the world inside the building or how you would open the door and what do you see when you open the door? I would suggest you looking at some type of video games that are, or at least or some type of video games that has at least this kind of reality in, Lon in London, Baroque, Gothic type of stuff, which is the Victorian age. The Victorian age, um, basically Assassin's Creed, uh, I, I think Assassin's Creed Unity and Assassin's Creed uh, Modern Days. You, you want the Gothic type of thing in the Modern Days, okay. The time zone? is not the time zone but the time is a little bit way too much in the future um, and by the way modern day, day days meet basically the 90s up to the 2000s those are the modern days by the way so you have a really really uh, type of world war one up to world war two concept graphic design which you can probably take, you can probably take it into three different ways. Uh, try to to look at Mafia, but they have probably Mafia 2. Uh, it plays in the 30s up to the 50s. Or maybe after World War 2. So yeah. After World War 2, Afghanistan, Vietnam. Uh, Mafia 2. Mafia 2. It's just for taking those references and see what you actually really, really see instead of what, what you, that you need to design the whole entire thing. It's just for the purpose of adding things. So Mafia 2, uh, as in script, it's really important to look at other RPs. As in script, Unity. I think comes with Victorian or Baroque type of uh, architecture inside of it. Uh, then we have another thing um, going on. At least this one, I keep it blank, I don't know right now. At least I can't think in an Assassin's Creed Unity or Assassin's Creed Mafia 2. Uh, let's see, uh, this one looks really nice, I really like, it. so you want to do mood paintings, you need also some iterations about moods, mood paintings. 
So this is being added. Uh, the other thing is, okay, you want okay buildings to do, but then you decide to go full on this one. And your reference basically depicted. Those are your, your reference that basically decide that you, you should totally do that. So in, in case of that, if you don't want to do inside architecture, you can take this out. Don't look at inside. If you do inside, uh, don't look at inside architecture if you do outside art architecture. Indoor, that's the thing. The idea, okay, it could really work, you know. Uh, basically, you do uh, how it's been called. I, I forgot the palace of the queen. And this looks like literally the palace of the queen. Um, uh, the bridge. Okay, nice. I think everything works as you just need to take those away. And now to Norwegian. Uh, here we have the problem. Well, I don't understand what kind of game you want to do because that direction is unclear. I see a car going around like Mad Max. Many people don't know that IP Mad Max uh, f in terms of video games, you know? Do you want to this? Because there are two different kinds of categories that goes into play. Do you want it much more? Is it Assassin's Creed? It looks like a season a little bit. Uh, but I think both of them are Mad Max. Uh, do you want much more a racing game, adventure game or open world adventure game? Uh, let's actually look here. Is it adventure game? Where is your gameplay? Oh, adventure, okay. So it's basically an adventure game. But then I really ask myself, why do you have a car? Why do you have... It's probably open world what you want to, to say, maybe. So if it's not, then this one, it's absolutely clear. Uh, the third thing that I would say in re your reference stage is you want to add some really crazy shapes into into that maybe a zeppelin type of buildings that flies up maybe in a zone where you see a ton of zeppelin kind of uh, rock buildings that are magical it's much more fancy yes but then also you need to to understand those crazy ty type of architecture that goes around it you really need to to put that in mind, what you actually try to do is way more advanced because um, we can pick Nordic mythology, you know, there are different types of mythology Nordic and that's why, why I go to that architecture, Japanese, Chinese, those are all easy type of things because there are way more better reference from it. This one is way more harder, but at least I know that you want something in stone or something with balloons to do, which is really nice. The color is really vibrant here. I really like that, but you don't need to to show so much because you have now a uncertain wonder. I think wonder describes it, describes that, or uncertain describes it too, which is sometimes uh, a journey, uncertainty, uh, sometimes you are not certain where your journey could lead, which is really nice, but it's really vibrant, um, is it a positive thing or a negative, I don't know right now, uh, Based on this mood, it's really vibrant. So the budget is much more triple A like kind of thing or double A. Uh, 
versus this one. I don't get this one. This could probably it looks like from the moods it fits with wonders. This one fits with wonders too. Angst. Angst. Probably that fits with angst. This one you don't need it. The, uh, at least this one you don't need it. It's way too saturated. And it doesn't l shows the vibrant parts of it. This one you don't need it to. And this one either. With the direction of the shapes, the shapes are way too complicated uh, in my opinion. Uh, this one fits perfectly. This one too. But then you have kind of this weird thing going on. I don't know, maybe it's this kind of shape or maybe it's this one with the triangular part. This one fits perfectly, but maybe, you know? But there are different kinds of shape. If if I want to make it easy for me to understand those things because this is literally like a cylinder and a ball. This is a cylinder, this is a box. This is a round object with a box. So there are so many shapes to explore in that kind of thing. If it, the building should be structured like that, then I would add it into the reference stage. Uh, based on your presentation, I see, okay, mood paintings, okay, you can actually explain it in a, in a keyframe way. Then you can also explain uh, this type of thing. Okay, the map. I know that's an adventure, so it's really nice to have this one picked up. Do you want it in that kind of perspective to do? Maybe. Then the exploration part looks also really nice in this one too. So the only problem that I face right now is this, those type of painting switches. Probably it's going to work. I don't know right now. But yeah, as long as you keep certain things in mind what you want, uh, especially when it comes to the culture part. Turkey? Does Turkey has that? That's, that's my big uh, question here. Does Turkey has this kind of architecture? Because some of them look like it's Africa instead of Turkey. It's really South Africa for me. Or maybe South America. But depends. The setting is understandable. We know that this one is like an adventure. Okay, nine. nice. Uh, modern post-apocalyptic. Okay, I understand that you do post-apocalyptic now. That means, okay, you can keep those things. But still have reference like it was from Turkey or you know moshes or uh, other type of buildings but uh, actually are into that or you can basically take Turkey take a bunch of photos from Turkey and then the actual game but really defines uh, apocalyptic in a really long stage or late stage like a desert is actually near automata near automata uh, shows that to you way too, be uh, too better than the other things um, think about some video games where you can find those ki kind of apocalyptic and you have an easy idea and easy understand Understanding where you want to go with your uh, whole entire IP or yeah With your whole entire IP Now to the fun uh, warm-up stuff, but you did there uh, really nice this one. I really like it, but There is one thing wrong with it and I think then the entirety of it which is absolutely fine Okay, I see that I see what you did. You tried to copy me a little bit, at least on this stage. This one is really nice. It's really perfect. 
Uh, there are different kinds of shapes. This one is probably a copy, this one is copy tool. Don't do copies from me. Take some pictures probably and try to, to squint it and uh, define the shapes much more. more. Way more better, make it huge, make it long because it's not literally a copy, but it's somehow a copy, I would say. Because I actually look at those files. Is it? I think it's perspective. And it's nice to copy things, but don't go overboard with it. Try to warm yourself also with different types of sh uh, shapes. If I do warm ups, I don't only try to do that with boxes, I also try that to do that with cylinders. Try imagine a cylinder doing the same thing. This is really hard to do. And based on that, maybe you can stretch the cylinder, do other things with the cylinder. Not only cut it, cut it in the way how I did it, but also cut it in the way how other people will do. You know? Don't look only at me at the warm-ups. There are different types of, of people and the way how I would do it. Because this one is literally tall. I tried to focus on tall buildings. That's why I did it. Here, really nice. You did something a little bit different. Nice. Even though they are the basic shapes, I see that you tried to copy me. Try to fill maybe this one with an entire page and this one with an entire page. This one with an entire page, this one with an entire page, this one with an entire page, and this one with an entire page, and this one with an entire page. So you have about six up to eight things that goes into a page, which is also based on this one and this one. You do cuts, which is really nice. You do dynamic angles, uh, foreshortening stuff. Really beautiful. Um, but yeah, don't f try to fit everything into two pages. Uh, at least if you are not uh, a beginner, you know? Because I already did ton of those stuff in one pages. I did a ton of uh, those volume in one pages. I did a ton of textures in one pages. And that's the thing what I tried to tell you. It's okay to copy, but don't go over. But with it, at least you understand it, and that's really beautiful. I like it. Good job at copying it. But now it's time to take it way more better. To make all of those happening. To understand way more better the shape, you can also do this kind of shape way more different. For example, it's completely distorted like this, and you need to figure all of those parts out and then. Then this could happening. Which is really nice. And the more you do that, the better it gets. Uh, four bots. So uh, if I want to do both inside outside, what should I add to it? If you want both inside outside, think about video games. Uh, look at other video games, or ask yourself what kind of thing you want to do. Do you want to do a bar? You know, a bar which people drink. You know, or. Uh, what could could we add to this number one a bar number two your the main room of the protagonist you know which is included bathroom living room and all that other stuff then we can also probably add uh, add other things but at least those two uh, I have in mind. But no, I didn't focus at all. Um, 
and those things uh, because I was I'm too much into an environment Nordic stuff right now. Nice. Okay, homework. Homework is basically in reference sketches. Is it reference sketches? Yeah. I uh, know. It's actually uh, that type of stuff. Is it concept Nordic? Yeah. Uh, produce at least 20 iterations based on your uh, reference, you know. That's the only job that you guys have and different type of things. You can actually also study first before you jump into that hardcore thing. But keep in mind, don't think as an artist, think like a developer, think at least don't think like fundamental, you know, where you need to fix those things. Because fixing things came later. Uh, so yeah, this is number one of homework with studying, you know, and adding, learning much more about the information, about Nordic stuff and how everything works. And then number two, about actually adding shapes, trying to understand the top, the ground object and the actual object, what is the bigger shape into that. Because this is the big shape, this could be the small shape, this is the medium shape, what we always see on top. Uh, try to understand big, medium, small. Because this is big, that entire thing here is big. It's based on one shape, which is the triangular part of it. To make it for you guys much more clear, big than this one uh, is medium, which I probably should paint or uh, draw white. Right? This is big. Red is mid. No. Maybe dark green is medium. Dark green is medium. Medium. And then we add the rest of it, which is probably this one. Which is the small part of it. Of those buildings. Of the object of the building, of course. We add all those complicated parts and inside of the medium shape, of the big shape, we do the medium. Inside of the medium shape, we do the small ones. Keep that in mind. This is how I would structure all of my drawings. You can also, which is the third homework, experiment with shapes in silhouettes, you know, take a bigger brush bigger brush then go smaller within medium go smaller with him and add small details but not too much details they should be the least thing what you should use that is just five percent or maybe less maybe ten percent this one should be twenty and the biggest one should be actually uh, 60, 70, yeah 70, because we actually did a ton of stuff, and then they turn opacity down, which is really nice, and then draw over it. So you have three homeworks, number one this one, number, uh, number two, and then number three. I hope that that covers everything. So I hope that helped you guys really much out. We're probably going to see us next week depending how much time uh, I need to actually prepare for the next uh, kind of stuff because then later on 
we're gonna turn these concepts into real things. We chose a few out and then we can decide, okay, which one is the most interesting part, which one is fantasy. We make based on that, because it's pre-production, we can go in the fantasy direction or we can go into the historical direction. Uh, so yeah, later on we figure that part out too and then we add story, much more story into that. We fixed, at least make it cool on a few buildings. And then the second part is fixing all those problems and resolving them. Then the third part is, but on the second part we need a lot of reference which uh, requires a logic uh, approach to our creative thinking. The third part is about adding stories, so we literally look at video games and other type of stuff, how we can resolve that. Oh yeah. So, I think we see us guys. Have a nice day everyone. And I hope this uh, classroom really helped you guys out. Bye guys.